here just because I know he has some input, but I know he has looked over the um, reserve study and has some comments. And um, I really just wanted to try to get our thoughts together before we invited engineers from the reserve study back. Um, because we have a big So I have a reserve reporter. I have it on together. Okay. So, um, I guess maybe if we, if, if, if I can, have uh, Casey kind of go over what his thoughts were and then the rest of us, or if Lauren or anybody has anything to add to that, and well, then we can discuss it. Is that so, I've got two different sets of comments. Are they They're actually together. Oh, they are? Yeah. yeah. The, the reserve study comments and the, and the spread, spreadsheet kind of go hand in hand. Okay. I just tried to explain my thoughts on the comments so you kind of understood what the spreadsheet meant. Gotcha. Um, just trying to keep the spreadsheet within size. So. Okay, because I, I put it out today, the one that Mary Beth said it was like eight pages and I was trying to tape it. I can't So with that, I'll turn it over to Casey, I guess. I can go through that maybe. Well, what I did, um, if you look at the the color coded one, uh, we'll start with that. Um, if you look at the top is high school, um, the line item number is the number that corresponds with the line item of the monster spreadsheet that came with the reserve study. Mm -hmm. um, so I just went through and I picked out some items that were definite, obvious misses on their part. Um, the floor coverage, carpet, um, just to kind of explain to you how I came up with some of the, the, the numbers. Um, that's line item 1.206. All right, they're saying 310 square yards of carpet at the auditorium and stage um, at $32,322 over the two replacements, all right? They're saying the carpet's gonna last 10 years. Well, why would we wanna put a carpet in in 2019 that's gonna last us 10 years? You can put a carpet in that's gonna last you 25 to 30 years. I mean, they make carpets out there that are pretty much indestructible. Um, various manufacturers, various styles, various applications. Um, so what I did was I took the 310 yards, divided it into the $32,000. It roughly comes to about $110 a, a square yard. Going rate for a good 25, 20, 25, 30 year carpet is about 63 bucks um, a square yard. Wow. So that's kind of where if you see the 32, 30, the 32322 study cost, estimated cost of 19,530, difference of $12,792. Um, just from my past experiences of doing rug projects for classrooms and stuff like that, that's the going rate. Um, that's where this the savings, actually the going rate's much less than that, but I tried to project it out, let's say 10 years at a 20% increase or whatever. Um, so. That's kind of how I went through all of the items that I saw that were definite items that I, that I knew just, you know, from stage floor refinishings. Um, and, and let's just go to the next, the line item 1.209 floor coverings vinyl. Um, I have spread out over five years instead of all one year, cover some areas with carpet to save cost. This is VCT tile. Why would we go and rip this up and have the expense of tearing this up when we can just take carpet and go right over top of it and put a 25, 30 year carpet over top of it for a quarter of the cost. Because the man hours is much, you know, is much less. It just, it, it doesn't make much sense. There's some areas you want to keep this kind of product in there, but you know, you can figure that out at the, at the time with, with, with the schools. I mean, uh, a lot of schools have gone to the to carpet in the classrooms. You have it in a lot of your schools here. Um, so having this product here is not, what you have to replace, replace it with. So if we're looking at long-term expenses um, and fiscal planning, I, I want fiscally planned to replace this apples for apples for, for the next 20 years. I would look at how you can cover this with a better product that's an easier one to maintain as well for the staff. Then you don't have to strip it, wax it, 
or anything. You know, you have to shampoo it once a year and vacuum it and keep it clean. Um, so maintenance-wise, it's and, and, and replacement-wise, it's a lot less. Is there any chance that there's a, <clears throat> that the glue that they use in here has asbestos in it? Not in this stuff. The only one I would say probably that may have that would be the high school, just because of age. All your other and, and birds, birds burrow. But I think all your other buildings are, are new enough so that, that you just you wouldn't want to disturb it anyway. Correct. This, this renovation should have had asbestos right. It did. It in did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then even if it has asbestos in the glue, you leave it alone, you encapsulate it in the rug, and then you're done. Uh, in any carpeting that we would do, we wouldn't use rug or conventional, we would use carpet tile, one more inch carpet tile, which right. probably is a 20 year life minimum. And now, historically uh, speaking, we've been getting away from carpet because of the disaster here in the cold. Is that what you Well, it, that depends on the application. But, uh, with carpet tile, mold, back of the putting on carpet tile, mold is going to make an issue. But here again, I don't know where you had a mold issue in here. Was it below grade or below grade? Did you ever get into it? Basement. Well, those were here. Was it really? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was down in the basement. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. But it also was because at the time there was no air conditioning that ran through. There was the, the whole HVAC system has turned over. Their only place that was air conditioning was in the office. All these classrooms were just open your windows. So I believe that well, was. Great. Yeah. 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 And, and the other part of your, your, your mold issue is mold will only grow where there's product for it to grow onto. Right. Right. Um, so if, if we're keeping the areas properly cleaned and shampooed, mold doesn't have a chance to grow. Um, so, and, and I mean, not that the carpet's the answer for all areas, but, you know, but, so, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, um, I'll just hit a couple of these items here. If you go down to uh, line item 1.451, uh, high school ceiling heat pumps, there is, I just divided the the number of units on the list by the uh, the total future cost, um, it came out to twenty seven hundred seventy dollars. You can't buy one of those units for twenty seven hundred seventy dollars. Uh, that might cover the cost of the unit. Now you have to replace and install. Um, so that's why I threw the value in for six thousand dollars. So you can see they they were estimated short by two hundred seventy four thousand dollars and change. Um, so I tried to highlight the big dollar amounts that they were under, um, and you'll see it's mostly on the equip, 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 equipment side of it for the eight HVAC units. Um, I'm not sure that's a pretty much a standard thing that they should know what it's going to cost to replace. I'm not sure why, they, why they're so far off. Um, some of the estimates are, are, are extremely high. Um, Let's see here. Cooling tower replacement line item 1.46. Um, they have $190,000 in replacement. I threw $100,000 in there. That realistically is about a $75,000 job. Um, but they're again going out over time. I wanted to, you know, at least kind of throw enough in there that, that it's covered. Um, but if I was to replace that cooling tower today, you're looking about 75 grand. Installed. Um, going down through uh, middle school, the first line item 2.11, the roofs, the type of uh, roof that is on there. Um, if I, I call it rolled shingle, um, it's more or less your 10 year rolled shingle roof, meaning it's a, it's a roll of asphalt shingles, thin, not a lot of material on it. Um, all of your flat roofs at the middle school and an AEC are that product. Unfortunately, all of those two buildings are both almost 10 years old, and that's about what you get out of it. Um, so I have uh, AEC's proposal was $38,000 to code it, that I could get 10 years out of it. I asked them to work up a number for replacement and put in a welded, Rub, 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 rubber style roof on it called TPO. It's a white rubber membrane. You put it down, you're good for 30 years. Um, 
because your insulation is good underneath it. I mean, you walk across those roofs, it's not like they have soft spots, not like they're, they're, there's, a, there's a lot of areas that they're, they have failed. Um, the insulation's in good shape. The insulation's pitched to the roof drains. I don't know why they put that type of roof down, the, 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 the top layer. But they did the save costs, obviously. Um, the uh, middle school line item, two, I'm just trying to hit a couple things here. Um, the boilers um, should last 30 years. Um, you know, replace one boiler with an efficient, with, a, with a, a newer efficient style boiler. I mean, in 15, 20 years, I can only imagine what the newer stuff's going to look like and how well it's going to work. Um, you can only get so much out of a, a BTU of gas, but I'm sure they're going to find a way to make them more efficient moving forward. Um, they have a lot of money in there for replacing both of them. I would replace one and leave one as a back backup. You could upgrade the burner on the old one and the same way they did it here. Uh, there's a high efficiency here next to the old one. Um, you know, these efficient ones are so good that you can pretty much take care of the place on one. Um, Asphalt sealing and crack sealing and painting. Um, I have Sealmaster proposal. I had Sealmaster who makes the crack sealant, makes the product that, that you use to, to seal coat. Um, I use them in the past. We can rent the equipment from them um, and then we do it with our own staff, um, preferably during the winter time, you know, as long as we don't have a lot of frozen ground. Because uh, you want the moist, you need you need the moisture out of the ground. You can't have frost in uh, on, on underneath it, or the or the material won't stick. Um, but uh, he actually comes here. He does an assessment of the parking lots. He'll take he'll go on Google Earth, take a picture of the overall of the building, um, figure out the square footage of the parking lots, and give you a price per square foot of what it's going to cost for for the uh, the seal seal coating. They'll tell you, hey, you should be able to seal code this many square foot of parking lot in a day. Here's your daily rental. You know, it does a whole nice, a whole nice uh, spreadsheet with that. So he's actually doing that now for me. Um, I am hopefully going to be renting a crack sealing equipment come uh, second week of December because uh, we have some big seam cracks at the middle school. Uh, a lot of cracks here, but. All of the newer schools, the, 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 the parking lot seams have really started to open up. Um, so you're going to get the moisture down next to the curb. <laughs> it's going to start to bust out uh, curbs and, and, the main, and the main seams. I have some pictures on my phone if you guys want to see it. I have one of my foot over top of the crack so you kind of appreciate how big the crack, the cr cr crack is. Um, so you're going to see a lot of, re of uh, items repeat through this. Um, that were definitely, um, I didn't get into the kitchen equipment stuff uh, because there again, if I told you what this stuff costs, I'd be lying to you. I, I, I mean, I, I just don't know, you know. Um, and there again, life, life expectancy of it is depends on how your people maintain so, and, and they use it. So the net of it is that you're saying that their number came in a good two million bucks over what, what you think today's cost would Correct. do these things. Correct. And, and there again, I have estimated high. Um, and if you look at Birdsboro Elementary, I'll just use that one. You'll see the last line item is classroom HVAC unit replacement. Um, and I have this to be part of an energy management upgrade, possible additional cost. Um, if you look up at the energy management uh, system line item, which is 4.422, um, I, they estimated $25,000 to upgrade that. That's a pneumatic system, so all your valves and everything are pneumatic. You would make that all electrical. You'd make it all DDC. Yeah. Um, so I threw in $250,000. So you have a, a shortage there of two hundred twenty-four dollars but also, depending on what type of system you go with, you may want to replace the units totally and put a ceiling-style unit in. Um, like you see in, 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 in office buildings, you know, uh, put a straight heat pump in. Um, now, granted, you have the new boilers, so you want to use the boilers and new chillers. So it, it, it's a catch-22. You have a lot of money and equipment that's brand new there that the life expectancy is a long time. So, <laughs> Brian, just slide your chair back a little bit. It should. So do you? Do you? bite the bullet and say we don't want to go that route and we're going to go straight electric. Right. You know, so it, it, 
it, that, that's that's a tough a tough one. But if you if you stay with the units that you have, you're going to replace the units because they retrofit them to make them electrical. So you repipe and replace all the valving, the labor you're going to have involved in that. It's a lot cost more cost effective just to rip the units out and put new ones in. Casey, um, if, if I heard you correctly, this 6.85 million that you have, 6,848,740, that, that's not to replace today. That has inflation built in. I threw money in. Mm -hmm. I mean, as I didn't sit there and figure out 2.6% right. like they no. did. I, I, I wanted to say, okay, if I think today it's going to cost 60 grand, I threw 80 grand in or, or you know, what, whatever. Okay. Um, and I didn't know what my end number was until I was done, to be honest with you. I, I just kind of sat there. I hit the auto sum on my columns. I'm like, wow, I'm $2, $2 million under. Good. You know, because I, I, with me throwing these large items in here that they're short, I, I didn't know where I was going to fall. Um, right. You know, the, the, the one, where is the one? Like Birdsboro Elementary. All right. They have boiler replacement, line item 4.414. They had six hundred seventy thousand dollars wrapped up in that. I threw three hundred grand in there. The boilers are already done. They, yeah, we just replaced them. So what, if we maintain them properly and we get them serviced properly, they should last us a long time. Um, so I mean, I still threw three hundred grand in there for a twenty-year period. And that's more of a maintenance cost than what a fiscal cost would be. But I at least wanted to throw a number in there, so there's a number there. Um, so some of these numbers are kind of maintenance costs as well, um, what I think the maintenance would cost, and, and even there were high. Um, so that's kind of, and, and the other one I told Lauren this earlier today, um, if you look at Amity Elementary School, um, they have bathroom rent and renovations. That building's seven years old. How many schools do you know renovate all their bathrooms in 20 years? You might replace fixtures and upgrade the flush valves and, and do that stuff to save to save consumption, but yeah. you're not going to go in and replace and, and renovate the bathrooms. I mean, they threw in four hundred grand, four hundred thirty-four thousand dollars. I mean, I threw a hundred thousand dollars in for retrofitting and upgraded <laughs> fixtures. I can replace a lot of fixtures for a hundred thousand dollars. But that's that over school. the next twenty years. Yeah, but still, it's five thousand dollars a year. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of. It's I'm still a hundred thousand. Oh, yeah, and, that, and that's yeah, just for Amity. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I was thinking One thing I remember was Kenny was talking about, and I don't know if it was done, is the high school bathrooms all had drywall, and the kids they, they had repaired it so many times because the kids beat it up, and right. he was going to get some kind of covering, rip that drywall off, and put this new covering on. He started. It. He did start renovating some of the the bathrooms. Um, if you go past the cafeteria. Uh, you're probably more familiar with the cafeteria, and then down that hall, and then turn left. That those bathrooms there, he started with. Um, and so I don't know if you got. Finish it with was all washable. And everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So the kids could draw right. on it and everything else. And and there's, I mean, if if you look at the line, the the second page, which is of the the, the big study. If you have that sheet, I don't think you do. They only have. They have locker rooms. Um. Annex and stuff like that. There's two, four, six, about nine hundred thousand in there, uh, estimated for those uh, space, space, spaces in the high school and the annex. And there again, I didn't touch those. Those are items that I didn't even, because I, I didn't know. I haven't been in them enough to understand what needs to be done. So you know, I was just going through the items that I'm thinking. Okay, if the building's eight years old. How much you're really going to spend over the next 20 years in a bathroom for elementary, elementary kids? You know, and that's, you know, so like I said, I, I was just going through things that I that I saw. Hey, you've got 100,000 here for monocacy bathroom renovations. What's that? That's the newest Monocacy. building yet. Uh, Correct. Oh, Monocacy. I thought we okay. I thought it was Amity. I mean, I well, Amity and, and, and Monocacy, Monocacy was the same way. Right, but Amity's um, old. 2005, I think. Is that yeah. still I think I, I think something like that, yeah. Yeah, we just we've just come to take it for granted that it's always been there. Well, we just built so much. I mean, it just seems like longer than that. But but like I said, I, I the the items on the main spreadsheet. I mean, like I said, this is what 15 pages or something like that. 
20 pages. I mean, I have it condensed down to two of the items that I saw. There's a lot of items in here that I know they're probably high on or I know they're low on, and I just, I, I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to sit there and, and tell you every line item and be wrong moving forward. I knew, I knew of these items, and there's two million that, that they're off, you know. And out of nine, out of nine that you picked, I mean, we're t we were talking, that's a quarter, less than a quarter of the right. study. So, Casey, the, the, the cooling towers at the high school, those are between, are those situated in that space uh, on the new high school side in the, in the annex? In that annex those are the chillers. Those are the chillers. Those are the newer chillers. The cooling tower is the small one that sits where the band trailer sits, that sits to the left. If you pull up to where the band trailers are to your left yeah. against that wall, um, and that's why I said that's a, that cooling tower probably costs $30,000. Probably not even that much to buy today, um, and I said throw a hundred thousand dollars in there for uh, replacement. Uh, that's the only cooling tower I know that exists in the high school. See, that's the only one I know of, and they threw two hundred and some thousand dollars, and I think four or something like that. What was the thing? Where am I at here? Tower was thirty-six. Yeah, th 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 thirty-six thousand, and they have cooling tower repairs. Yeah, well, I know they just like, put, he pulled the oh, he pulled the shaft out. They pulled the shaft out of that. I think last year. And, and he put and a new was, and a new mo 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 right. motor on that because the motor sits. The old motor is inside the mechanical room. Because I asked Phil, a matter of fact, I said, "What's this motor for?" He goes, "Well, that's the one we replaced on the cooling tower because it was aging." Right. Kenny wanted to replace it, so this one's a backup. So, um, um, and that's why I have in there fifteen thousand dollars for for maintenance and repairs. I mean, the bearings on that cooling tower are three hundred bucks. 400 bucks probably for the pair. Um, it was just the amount of time it took him and his guys to yeah. pull it. Yeah, and we had a lot of problems with it over the the winter with the snow and the freezing yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And it took a toll of the bearings because mm -hmm. he took me over there one time. And yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you heard it. And like I said, that's rebuilt. Yeah. So if, if we're properly maintaining it and we're greasing it properly and we're doing what we need to do, that should last a long time. Um, so like I said, the, the, my, my, you know, I just I saw things that were very very obvious to me that were way under or way over, um, you know. So you know it, it's it's uh, just wanted to make you guys aware of of, of, of the things that I saw, um. and that's kind of what this this is trying to explain to you in layman's terms what. I was thinking when I did this one. <laughs> well, I, I think, I mean, some of the, obviously, your HVAC numbers are better numbers because, I mean, you know that in and out, I would assume. Um, I guess the, what, one of the questions I have is, like, did they give us this in, like, an Excel-type sheet? Or, yeah, I mean, is this something we can manipulate the numbers ourselves? No. 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 Oh, we can't I, modify it? I can send you what was originally sent to me. No, I just I don't mean me, but like <laughs> you can highlight the numbers on this on, on this original that was sent. You can highlight them, but you can't go in and cut and paste and put your own numbers in so it retallies. Hmm. I tried. Well, Trust me, I tried. Well, because I didn't want to have to do that. this. Maybe that's one of the things we well we bring them and we ask. Because I think I mean I think this was good for start because we really had nothing, and I, I don't think we had. I think we just you guys have so much going on. I don't know that it would have made. It, I think it would have taken some time to sit down and do this ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we could utilize this Base database one. to manipulate mm -hmm. ourselves and change, make changes to what we want to change, if we can, those. I mean, it, it's still a help, but somebody's gonna. You're not gonna want to go through it. Re-input all that into our own spreadsheets. So I think they should. Maybe, I would think that we should ask. I mean, I I, I, would, I don't have a problem asking for in, in, a, in a format format that we can manipulate. You could check with Scott to see if he would be able to change the. I'm sure there's a way to yeah. do it. I, I just I'd like to see them get a lot closer to reality here. I mean, I like the fact that. I'd rather overestimate on a, on something we're budgeting for. That's kind of the purpose of this exercise, right? So I'd rather be over in our estimate and come back and be like, yay, it was less money, that's great. But 
they're so far off. Like if I came to a customer of mine with a number that this was far, was this far off? I wouldn't have a job very long, and they charged us a lot of money to do it. Well, the, the only problem is, I, I think if you go back and let's say change your numbers because you're, you're overstated, you're going to get into another contest now. They're going to say they're right. Casey's going to say he's right. Well, I'd like to have that battle. I'd well, like to I let, usually uh, know where they came up with their numbers. For correct. Like the HP, especially correct. the HPAs. I mean, carpet, okay, they could argue, well, industry standard is you replace it every 10 years. That's why we use that. And right. we can say, no, we don't want to. We want to do it every 20. Every, and they will change those numbers. I mean, they said that's part of what, when they come back, we can say, no, we don't want to do it every 10. We're going to do 20. And we're going to, but it'd be interesting to know where they, they get their some of their numbers. The basic. The, so this is more of an open dialogue with them? Mm -hmm. I, that's my understanding, that we can, we can talk to them about things we want to put in or not put in or how to structure them, and, and they'll change it, like, well, you know what I mean? Well, they'll, that's why I want to meet, so we can kind of figure out what we want to say to them or, or have but, them. Yeah, yeah you're right, Brian. Actually, I mean, we, we pay them a lot of money. and, and yeah. For seventy thousand dollars, it's a shame that if, if the Casey's got to go over it line by line yeah. to, to redo it. You know. I think we should just use like a percentage uh, of their estimates, you know, on budgeting. So I think that's that's the main purpose for doing this, right? I wouldn't. It's I not wouldn't. going to stimulate any action by Casey to do anything. Casey will still replace it as they need it but for budgeting purposes. I wouldn't apply that percentage though because. But they are the experts. Is, well, you can't know, apply a percentage they, because, have because have some, some are higher, some are lower. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Have what these guys you, actually been in Casey's shoes or something, something like that? Or are these just they're, they're engineers? These are engineers. Oh, I mean, that's Lauren. Like here's, here's a snapshot of the kids. Like but they're college engineers. Seventy-five percent of their numbers for budgeting. You know, so they're looking at like piecework. If you're going to do something like this, it should take you. This is the amount they're going. To, they're looking it up. This is what it's going to cost. Well, you know, this, this table they have says it's going to be this amount of money, and they don't really know that, right. uh, other than what that lookup table tells well, them it should. Yeah, the, right. the, the one thing, thing is what Tamara said. We we had nothing, and and if, if nothing else mm -hmm. out of this, we now have a list of what's going to have to be fixed, replaced, modified, or whatever. <laughs> over the next 20 years. Now, whether it's nine million as they state or seven million as Casey states, we know what needs to be done. And, and as each job comes up, we're gonna price it out then. It's a matter of budget. Oh yeah. I but, but that, yeah. Was, that was the point I was making before was that over 20 years, you know, I think the total was over 40 million, right? So we were talking about $2 million a year that we're not, Budgeting for it all right now. We're not even considering right. it right now. So now we have a baseline. Yeah. Think we should spend a lot so of time dickering over these numbers. No, I don't I, think so. No, I, but but I it's, it's, it'll be good to have a living document that you have. Sure. All right, this is what yep. this is what they're uh -huh. painting. Okay, then as one. you go through it, you're ticking off these if things that we're dealing with. Casey has a chance the to. The actual they were. Exactly. And in case or someone has a, a chance to go through it and scrub it. Very well thought out. Well, that's why I'd like to have, I'd like to see if we can get it in some type of format that we can manipulate it. So that I think that's a good as we do it, Casey yeah. can go and go on, well, we did it this year, so now we bump it out yeah. 20 more years the sooner, or 10 more it's years. Got, everything that's on that document with the timing, it's got to work its way into the five-year budget. Yeah. Some, somehow. Now, what I, what I would suggest in terms of the five-year budget, is they've offered to do this again in four years for forty thousand. I think. Yeah. I know. I, if, well, if we've got one. a twenty-year projection here, I don't know why we need to do yeah. it again in yeah, four years. I don't, I don't. I don't know that we need that. I'm with you. I'm with you. Two thousand. Two thousand and sixteen for fifty grand. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that we need that. That's fifty grand. Fifty grand in two thousand and sixteen. So they're saying in, in two years yeah. this would be. Oh, you do. Boot. Yeah. yeah, I think. I think they should be happy. I just said oh. it to you. Oh, great. Okay, I don't really want to manipulate it. No, 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 I just no, want to make sure that you guys can. I think we need a budget. I saw him trying to cut in with his hand. Do <laughs> so right. you guys have a, a, a manipulatable Excel <laughs> file yes. that you can use and update it? Uh, it's in a, what was that word again? <laughs> I, that's why I said it's so slow. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was actually a word. I like it too. <laughs> 
Let's see if you can say that same like word on the 15th after that. a few ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? Because I, I think that would be probably one of the most helpful things out of it. He just wants to see it. Watch his actual? No, they, they can use it. They can use it. I think they should be manipulating the actual. Yeah, you thought Mary Beth was keeping it. It's going back to us at the end of the year, not close to the well, budgeted. And I think one question to ask him is, study came to the actual. is, you know, like, in the high school, they have one of the on the on the main sheet is ceiling, acoustical tiles, grids, lighting to be phased. They have one point two five million dollars in for replacing lighting, ceiling tiles, ceiling grids, and the classrooms, hallways, libraries, offices, and cafeterias. Well. How many places have you ever seen go in and rip the entire drop ceiling out, grid and everything, and put the grid? Say your comment. They just replace the ceiling tiles. Just replace the ceiling tiles. So I mean, that, that's the kind of some of the questions that I would ask them. Say, what, what, <laughs> where did you come up with million two five, and 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 why do you feel the the drop ceiling grid has to be replaced? And they're doing it twice. And they're doing it twice. And you know, it's probably just one of those worst case. You know, Correct. Or looks at, and, I mean, I think mean, any of us that have worked with engineers that haven't really worked in the field, you know, like they'll tell you, well, the book says, Correct. or it's going to work like, and it doesn't really work like that, no, but the book says it's going to work. I didn't say all engineers. Blame it on the engineers. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, like I said, there's just things I, I saw in there, and I didn't bother putting it in here, because I just, I, I just, that's the questions that I would ask them. You know, where, where did they come up with these numbers on, mm -hmm. on some of the items that I don't even have that, that aren't even on anything I have, you know, like, you know, because I mean, I, I saw things like that. I'm thinking, well, you know, why, why do I want to replace the partition wall twice in the high school or once in the high school in the high school gym, including the weight room? Um, it says two partition walls for $180,000. Jim, and back to that ceiling figure, they say it has a 25 year useful life, they're replacing it. Nine years. Or excuse me. Eleven years. Yeah. Um, Casey, I do have one question. Go ahead. In, in the high school, turf and track replacement, and you're saying the plans for 2020 may be able to be pushed off to later, but I, I didn't think that, that artificial turf had that kind of life expectancy. We're in pretty good shape. It's they they say you have 10 to 12 12 years really on on our depending on on the way it's being the way right. it's being used yep. um turf tracking court yeah turf tracking court came in for field turf and they do the the the, the deep grooming mm -hmm. and then they do the ggg max testing uh, their last report just said that there is accelerated wear and tear on the turf that's one reason why we put the infill in it um, that's why else they're going to come back and they're going to do it again in spring, do the, 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 the good deep tining, re-fluff everything, re-spread everything really good, and retest it. Um, Isn't and then there we'll some get kind it. of machine we had that we weren't using though? Or something? Correct. And that's what we did with the guys October 20th or something like that. Um, so, but they have a machine where it actually... I wouldn't say sucks everything up, but they can actually go all the way down to the matting, um, and they actually do it for field and turf, and makes the turf, and they refluff it and really dirt. clean it. The stuff that get, comes out of it, and they get everything out of it. The pictures are it's yeah. amazing. It's disgusting. And then, <laughs> yeah, and Pretty then much. they do what they call a G G Max <laughs> testing, where they drop a weight. Send them over my house. Yeah. 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 Hair clips and spikes. Yeah, and yeah. all sorts Hair of stuff. And They'll actually drop a weight and they and they do that throughout the field to prove that it has the right cushion effect that it's supposed to have by design, by PI dub 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 double AK guidelines and stuff like that. So um, that's definitely well, we don't have that piece of equipment, but it, it definitely you know. And when you look at Governor Governor Mifflin's turf, there's if they're making PI double guidelines, there's no way we're not. I mean, our turf is just beautiful. Yeah, I mean we're we're well within the guidelines, but there's oh, I, there's yeah. the I don't know if you saw that bitch. There's this black. Well, one of the other questions I would have them would, would be, and I, I don't know if you want to bring this up at the Braille meeting or regarding here. 
if we want to bring the engineer back from this company or back to the whole to the whole board, or do you just want facilities to handle it? Well, I think if my opinion, if we want to bring it back to the facilities. It'd be, it'd be great to have Casey here oh, because yeah. oh, he, he, he lives all this stuff. He's I mean, definitely going to be here for it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the challenge in this for, for why they're making some of these assumptions mm -hmm. because if they're just going by, by like recommendations and things out of a book. Standards. Well, exactly. And then, then you have an idea of what you're in for for the rest of it. And then it, then you're relying more on, on the experience of Casey or someone else that, that does it. To answer your question, I mean, I'd have to come back to facilities and just invite the rest of the board members well, if they, if they care to listen. Do. You know. Right. Because um, it, it does seem more like it's our forte. Maybe not everybody in the public or the board wants to sit through and hash all that. <laughs> um, so, okay. And we can do that. Um, and I think, too, I mean, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to spend a whole lot of time, like Carol said, arguing points but it'd be interesting to know what their thought process are you willing to pay for them to come back no, that's included in the study okay. was was uh, like a return discussion I, mean, well, I don't know if it'll be person to person or if it'll be a phone type thing but they they did come back for discussion <coughs> they did have discussion so now, i see the study as sort of the handbook that comes with your car it tells you they recommend it's when you're going to get your oil change when you're going to get your <laughs> yeah, the transmission flushed. You, it is what it is. You don't have to follow the guidelines. Oh, look, I didn't do 50,000 miles this quarter, so I don't have, have to get my that. It's just, a, it's just your guidelines. Right. If we don't end up following it, great, but it gives us a tool for budget. Expect in the next 20 years. Have any else on the reserve study? Do you guys have anything else you want to update facilities on? Okay. I, well, it wasn't official, so if you don't, that's fine, but if you have anything else you want to throw out at us, we'll hear it. We really need bathrooms in this building. Your contract <laughs> has been in place for two years. It expires on the 16th of December. I'm sorry, what contract? The electricity procurement contract. Oh, okay. Casey and I have met with them and they have sent us multiple proposals, but we're only going with, right now, they're only recommending that we go with four uh, locations because of the market and the volume in those four. The four are the high school, AEC, middle school, and MEC. I think they call those the mid Size. At any rate, what I'd like to do, since this is up on technically renews on the 16th, they sent us a couple of upgrades today. We're uh, looking to go just one year on this because we're looking at some other options. But we do need to jump in by the middle of December. So we'd like to have it on the an action item on the committee of the whole on the second. Check this done. Now, is, is that like a, just a price per kilowatt, or is this, this doesn't have anything to do with that, where we go offline for no, a while? No, that's okay, separate. That, okay, We're working on that too, but this, okay. is, this is just procurement. Okay. Okay. I will send everyone the latest numbers, uh, and it will be refreshed as of the day of the action as well. And we've been doing this uh, every 10 days for a month, month and a half now. So, but we would like to get it done uh, by the 16th, obviously. So. And do we have to bid that out, or is that like a state? This is service. Okay, it's a service. service. And this is, uh, let's see, who they're tied in with? Uh, Casey's tied in with Casey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this is for the Casey Electric Company. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.
their their broker fee is actually in with the with the numbers. Um, if we would go to direct to constellation, they don't really reduce it a whole lot unless you're a big player because they don't want to cut the brokers out right. of it. You know, if you like your insurance carrier cutting out their their agent and you going direct. So they always have that money in there for for that. Uh, so you have to be a really big player in order to go direct and, and have them cut out their guys, their their sales staff more or less. See so that's where like a county consortium for I mean, just like our health insurance would go through a consortium that we all banded together. That's why I was wondering if you guys did that, because the state did that for local government, the well, local government center did <laughs> That's where we're headed. Okay. That's that the IU 13, which is Lang, Lancaster, Lev, Lev 11, and their guy is really, really sharp. Uh, they hired him, what did I tell you, Lawrence, seven years ago, right. something like that. And now they have left that area and are branching out to. Oh, all so that's why you just want to go up the one year. Exactly. What, what, is, what are they giving you? Rates? For, for rates, as of today, on the, on the 12 month, Ranges from six seven to seven three. Okay, that's on not bad for this one. It's gone down a lot over the last couple years. On the twenty four month, we were just a fraction better. But uh, Casey just came back from this meeting last Thursday, Friday, uh, when we learned about the, the uh, IU thirteen deal. So that's why we said I contacted them. They said give me a twelve month. So. That's what we're, we'll have on then for approval. Okay. And now U13 also is now having a marketplace web website. Uh, yeah. They've gotten into the custodial supplies. Uh, they're getting into field market pain. Uh, you name it, they're starting to get into it because that they're just they do a great job of doing it. Uh, now, some things I can get through them cheaper, some things I can probably buy directly cheaper because, you know, uh, it's just the way it works. And they know that going into it, but they, they now want to offer it to everybody. So what they do is they they make a program up, they do it with the IU-13 only for a year, about a year, to make sure they have all the bugs worked out of it, and then they offer it to everybody. Uh, and they're actually looking to do it statewide. Uh, I'm not sure how they get paid. I mean, they are an IU, so I'm not sure how that. I think there's a membership fee in KPN. I believe uh, the old purchasing network had a percentage of your actual purchases. You have an yeah. upfront fee and then a, a participation fee based on what you actually, the volume of what you purchased. I'm sure that's something somebody's paying. Yeah, somebody's paying. And they do a great job, and they came and they did a, a pre presentation for. All the the Bur the Bur Burks County guys and said, hey, um, now Brandywine uses them for like their light bulbs and ballast. Uh, they buy all the light bulbs and they recycle all their bulbs and ballast through the IU13 contractor who they have the contract with. And he said he saves 20% by doing it that way. Um, and what's nice is you can jump in at any time with them. It's not like they're they have just a, a set time where you have to buy in. It's just, you, you can you, you can hop in any time. The only thing I have is the recurring topic that we've been talking about, and that's facilities use and what we're going to be charging. Because I had met this um, past week with the um, Birdsboro Community um, Center, and they typically lease or rent our. Um, <clears throat> couple of schools where they put on like their their ballet shows their dance recitals and I know that we're trying to follow what we currently have in writing but it's much higher than what they've ever paid and so I told them I would come back and, and talk to the committee with regard to that that we weren't really moving on making the rates higher yet or you know we didn't have anything set that we're really trying to iron this out we don't want to you know take people that have been loyal customers to us and you know send them right out of um, out of business because they, they really don't have anywhere else to go um, and along with that Casey met with somebody that wants to <clears throat> lease gymnasium space for his uh, 
karate or taekwondo, taekwondo, taekwondo or yeah. Yeah. so yeah. and and our current rate is like fifteen hundred dollars a time and like th that wouldn't be feasible for him so i think that you know, i know we're a work in progress and so i i've just been deferring back to what we had been charging these places at a friendly cost right now and trying to collect the, the bigger fees that we have there. But I just wanted to make everyone aware that I'm trying to work with our community members and you know they understand having to cover costs with regard to custodial fees that if there <clears throat> if there's cleaning that's taking place but evidently in the past um, they were being charged custodial fees, never saw a custodian, and ended up being the ones who would clean everything in between the, the rows, the aisles, making sure floors are clean. You know, that's just, you know, it's unacceptable that they're, that they're paying the fee, the fee, never see a custodian, they take the trash out, they do all the cleaning, and yet they were charged with a, a custodial cost. So um, I'm just trying to work with them and then, you know, bring that information back to you. So I think, you know, when we reconvene again, I know we're not completely done yet with you know our work in progress but just so you know they did also talk to me about the vans they understand that you know the leasing of the vans is going to be terminated after this past summer <clears throat> they understood that um, I tried to explain that it was um, even though that they felt that they were compensating the school district for their use I said you really can't compensate us enough for wear and tear on the van that we wouldn't normally be putting on the van in the summertime, that it's really better for us if it's sitting than for it to be you know, used in some way. So we just don't have the money to be able to replace it in the event that something would happen. And we know that your insurance would take care of it. But you know, at this point, we would just rather leave our two vans, sit in our parking lot of the high school and you know, just be there. Um, and they understood that, but there were just some, a few other things that we were trying to work out. Um, something that the community center is doing in the summertime, which is outstanding, is that they are working with the same um, people that we do to support reading and helping children um, read. And it's something that's sponsored through the United Way, and it's called Ready, Set, Read. And they're practicing this over the summertime. So all of our students that attend their camp have to sit and read for you know 20 minutes or so. So um, that was a wonderful thing to hear. They, I, they have employed a couple of our teachers who are coming in that, that are more or less taking our um, program and continuing it. So it's really helping the kids. And um, so I did offer, I know that we have a ton of books upstairs that we had taken from this library that never went anywhere. I said I would be more than happy to lend you books to a library because there are students. So we're working out something like that instead of them sitting upstairs in boxes and not being used. So those were just a few things that I had going on. And you know, I said to Casey that we would bring up the fact of um, the Taekwondo gentleman. I know that when we originally had gone into like a lease arrangement with um, the Rage Soccer Club for the turf field that we didn't go by the standard rate that because they were using it so much um, that we went with a, a different rate. So that's what I would suggest, or I had suggested to Casey that he go back and see what a reasonable, what, what, this in, what they were looking to you know, use the space for because the gymnasium would be a perfect place. And I did say, however, we would have to have some type of um, someone on. Yep. So. And they understood it. And, and, and they're, they're actually from about 45 minutes away. Um, but the Taekwondo group that he works with, they kind of have like franchises. I don't want to say franchises, but there's areas right. that this instructor has. So his instructor's talking him into going on his own, and he, and he helps instruct the class that he's at. And this area works very well with the areas that are around here. There's nothing in this area. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a self-defense thing and, and, and that kind of stuff. So, and when are they looking to do that? As soon as possible. I mean, they're they're they're, like a weekly thing, or they're looking two or three nights a week. Yeah. Okay, so um, okay, just so yeah. be like a karate school, right? Correct. Correct. Like Correct. And it's, we it's for profit, um, but they have no current members in this area, so they're trying to find a facility, right? So that they can get the word out. That, hey, you know, um, but I was going to ask that. To yeah. yeah, kind of like a max out. You know, the max fitness. I I was trying to get them to come in, but I saw that they were starting to close down. But I thought this would be a great um, opportunity. They want to use the gym here or somewhere. I was trying to promote oh, our no, gym at one time. Yeah, 
Yeah, because it's you know it would, it's a great gym, and we don't currently use this for um, any of our basketball leagues or anything because it was never manned. And the worst thing we can do is have um, some of those leagues in here without anybody in. Right, because I know, like I said, I know I've, I've heard that from community or well, we can't use the gym at right. The, and you know here and I'm like well no because we have to pay so much to be right. here well, and so you'd have to pay it. well why should we have to pay that for the kids in the community well because somebody's got to pay for it Right. But if this is a for-profit <laughs> right. situation, right. you've got to charge them a different price than right. a local boys club. Right. Something. But, I, yeah, so that's what I fear. I mean, let him try to give us a base yeah. idea and then, you know, come back and start to work. So I, I knew that, you know, the $1,500 per use was like, that. that's that's for one-time users. Well, that's, or, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. that's why we really if just... We're covering our costs and making a few bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 1500 bucks a use, two or three nights a week. Yeah. Kind of yeah, cost, kind of cost prohibitive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might as well get a retail store. Yeah, and it's a husband and wife. Um, they own a, um, uh, a drive, I think it's drive, but or stuff, 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 stuck, 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 company. And they have like 20 some employees. So they, so they have crews of four or five guys, four or five crews. And uh, he got into it just for stress relief, more or less. And he just really enjoys it. And, um, and their daughter has cerebral palsy, mild case cerebral palsy, so uh, she also helps instruct because uh, it's, it's done wonders for her. So that's kind of why they, they, they saw what it could do for her with disabilities that they thought, wow, we could really, you know, we, we could promote this. So I would tell you to reach back out to him, ask him well, what he texted me actually today. Okay, great. As a matter of okay. fact, I said, we're having a meeting tonight. I'm sure it'll come up. And, okay. you know. Yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. Be able to come to some number that makes yeah. everybody happy. I think we want to know what the what the maximum number of uh, uh, kids they've had in that one time. Right. To, we can gauge some sort of wear and tear on the surfaces. Is it fifty or is it ten? <coughs> Two hundred kids. What is the goal? Okay. So that's all I have. Okay. Well, looks like it's perfect timing. All right. So thank you. Your secretary.